As you're standing, you draw your attention to the screen. Psalms 103, 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within, within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not of all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies my mouth, say it, my mouth, with good things, so that the youth is renewed like eagles, and the Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts upon the children of Israel, and the Lord is merciful and gracious. Come on, somebody give God an amen for merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquity. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Come on, give God some praise and you can be seated in this house. Woo! Glory! Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Well, I want to tell you it's been a, a wonderful week, and praise God for the asphalt and the stripes on the asphalt. Amen. It's good to have people uh, parking on the new asphalt and making them room for growth. And I, I believe that multiplication is coming pretty rapidly. And uh, I, I want you to understand that the Lord said there's going to be healing in this house. There's healing this morning, the early service, but there's going to be healing, uh, multiple healings in this service today. How many needs a healing? Hey, Amen. You need a physical healing. You need emotional healing. Some of you just need to love again. And I'm going to dwell there for a minute because I feel the Holy Ghost raising up. Some of you said, I'll never love. This is for somebody. I'll never love again. And you made a vow and you, when you said never. When you said never and you spent a lot of time in misery because you sabotaged relationships. I'm prophesying to somebody. You have sabotaged relationship after relationship. It goes good for a while and you start to trust and you get in fear and you will sabotage that relationship because you, that little girl inside of you, I'm going to say it, that little girl inside of you, is afraid of being hurt. And I want to tell you that today is your day for God to completely heal and restore your life. This is your moment, your God moment that you've been waiting for. And the Lord said, if you'll turn it loose today, he said, I'm already reaching, I've already done my 90. He said, I'm wanting you to do the 10. I'm wanting you to move in because I've already reached the 90. He is pulling you out, drawing you out to heal your broken soul, male and female. I'm talking to a female right now, but God is trying to call male and female home. You have, you have walked away. You have just simply existed, and you're miserable. You're in this house miserable. You feel God's presence, and you just cry. But I'm going to tell you this, there's another level that God has taken you. He's going to feel the inside of you like never before. There's church folks in this house that are miserable. Come on, there's church folks that you've been miserable for a very long time because you're still harboring the, the hurt from the past, disappointment from the past. You're still harboring feelings towards somebody that hurts you, rightfully so. But I'm going to tell you this, the moment that you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, you gave up your rights. You have the right to remain silent and to forgive everybody that's wronged you. It's not letting them off the hook, but it's putting on God's hook. And God said, I will repay, saith the Lord. Are you here in this place? Oh, there's somebody going to get free. I'm talking about sloppy free. 
You're going to get free in this house today. You might as well get ready. The Lord said there's healing in the house, and I'm going to tell you this. He's not a man that he can lie. There's healing in the house. Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And I want to tell you this, I'm tired of seeing people that's bound leave this church in the same way they came in. Mm, you didn't hear me. And the Lord told me, he said, that's going to stop. If you want freedom, freedom is in the house. Amen. You might as well get ready to walk out of this place different. Your friend's going to look at you different. Amen. They're going to be happy. Isaiah 53 says, Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did extreme him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one his own, and he, he laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Come on, look at somebody and say, I ain't carrying it no more. I'm not carrying the guilt, not carrying the shame. Amen. My past is past. If you look at the person next to you, they're built, they're, they're, they're built the same way you are. I'm talking about as far as the features. They all have ears, right? And you see, look at the ears have pointed forward. The eyes are forward, the nose is forward, the mouth is forward, amen. It's a lot easier to reach forward. Why? Because we've been made to go forward. We've been made to walk forward. It's difficult to walk backwards. Paul said this, I forget those things which are behind me, and I press towards the things that are before me. Come on, I'm going to tell you this. There's some people in this house, you're going to forget the things that was behind you. Come on. Not all of it was bad, but listen to me. The things that you did hang on to, was hanging on to, has kept you from the things that is before you. He said, I press towards the mark of the calling of God. I want to take you to a, a passage of Scripture in the book of Luke, the fifth chapter. Starting 27 verses, after these things he went forth and saw the publican, and, and after these things was simply this. He just got through healing a leper. He just got through healing a palsy man. The Bible says he was just healing like crazy. Everybody that would come in, in, in contact with Jesus, they left there differently. And I believe that when people come through these doors, they ought to leave differently. Amen? And they've come in contact with a true and living God. What a powerful worship. Amen? Pa Pastor Jeff, thank you for your leadership, bringing, bringing us into the presence of God. Because when you come in contact with God by his spirit, you're forever different. I don't believe miracles change people. You can look at the children of Israel, and you see that it doesn't change people. It may change you physically, but I want to tell you what does change you. Once you've ever experienced the presence of God, you'll never, ever be the same. Come on, listen, you'll be different forever. Come on, it's one high that you'll never forget and you'll never equal to. Amen. When you've been touched by Almighty God and been baptized with the Holy Ghost, it will mess you up for real. Amen. I'm talking about it. It'll change the way you talk, change the way you laugh. Amen. It'll change the way you love people. Hmm. After all these things, he went forth and saw a publican. Look at somebody say, a sinner. How about this? A tax collector. <laughs> Any of you in here work for the IRS? <laughs> Nobody wants to see the IRS show at your doorstep. I just come here to audit your books. Make you want to start wanting to kill people. Huh? Come on, somebody. Matthew was one of those tax collectors. He was standing at the, the, the place where he was receiving taxes, and when people brought goods in there, making sure they paid their fare. Matthew was a, a wise man, Levi. He was a, a wise man. He was a smart man. He kept the books. And he making sure that he made a good living, and also he making sure that what was due to the government, he was the one collecting it for them. 
Jesus came to and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom and said unto him, follow me. And he left all, rose up and followed him. Now, watch this, watch this. I believe that there's power in simply getting up, leaving all, and following him. I'm not saying to quit your job, not saying to do things stupid, but I'm telling you, it's, it's a time that God is calling his people to leave that what's what used to be. Amen. The old list, the old numbers. Amen. The old contacts. Come on, the old hard feelings. There's something about leaving everything and simply following Jesus. Levi made himself a great feast at, at his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with him. Let's just stop right there for a moment. Now, I remember when I got saved. I'll never forget the night. I don't know what date it was. I know what year it was, but I don't know even what month. Matter of fact, at that time in my life, I, I didn't know what month it was. Amen. It was just it was, a lot of things was happening. But I remember this. I remember the night that I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And I remember him coming into my heart. But I remember because I was living the way that I was living for a time and developed a reputation for who I used to be or who I was at that time, when I gave my heart to Jesus, I had made my plans that I wasn't going to tell anybody. I was just going to get rid of the conviction. You can look at me that way if you want. But maybe you're all doing the same thing. Matter of fact, I woke up, when I woke up that morning, I told my wife that I gave you who has heard this story Bobby, more every time I've told it. When I woke up that morning, I simply told my wife, I said, you'll never believe what I did that night or, or last night. She said, what? I said, I gave my heart to Jesus. And she said, you did not. I said, I did. And when she looked at my face, she said, you did. And she said, I got to call my daddy. I said, don't be telling nobody. And she said, what? I said, I don't want to tell nobody. She looked at me like, you didn't get it. I know that I received him as my Lord, but the next level was for me to tell somebody about it. Levi was different. He followed the Lord, and he called his friends and said, I want you to come over my house. I don't know anybody in their right mind that doesn't want to go to somebody's house and get free barbecue, amen, free fried chicken, free mashed potatoes, amen. Potato salad. Some of that fancy dip with the rotel in it. Amen. With those Frito scoops. Are you in this place? You haven't really able to carry any dip unless you've got a scoop. Are you in this place? Scoop it up. Nobody in their right mind don't want to go over for some free food. Especially when you didn't have to cook it and you don't have to clean it up. Did I lose everybody? Matthew said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going I'm to get this all out because I don't want to just have my seat empty. I want to tell my friends where I went. I believe that we have a lot of Christians that's MIA. Come on, you was once there and you're not there anymore and people don't know what happened to you. The lifestyle that you was living, they think you're dead. They don't know. Nobody wants to ask because what kind of friend would they be if they don't know where their friend's at? Mm-hmm. Think about that for a minute. Matthew simply said this. He went, to, he went to and had a big cookout at his house, 
and there was a great company of publicans. There was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. But the scribes and Pharisees murmured against the disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answered and said, They, are, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now we're talking about healing and forgiveness. Jesus was concerned about individuals. He preached to great crowds, but the message always to, was to the individual. Jesus, get right where you're at, right where you live. Come on, if you was a farmer, he would talk about sowing seeds. If you was a fisherman, he would talk about fish. Wherever, wherever you was at, he would come to where you was at. He'd always provide things for you that you would listen. Come on, he would feed the multitudes and he would teach to them. It's hard to really get to somebody, come on, listen, if they're hungry. That's why we try to get you out of here before 12 o'clock. Come on, can I get a witness in this place? Because you start thinking about a cheeseburger and, and this, that, and the other. But Jesus would always minister to their needs, their physical needs, and then he would make sure that they was healed. He would mis minister to their, their natural needs, and they would supply their, their miracles and healing and restoration. It didn't matter if they was completely uh, demonically oppressed or possessed. God would deliver them. His purpose was to transform them and send them to share out the message of forgiveness to their friends, to others. I wonder what would happen if your friends, come on, the ones that we uh, were told to stay away from, and, and I understand that. I believe that the ratio, if you're going to go in a dark place, you better take some help with you, amen? But you must understand, I believe that there's friends out there that you love, that you cared about, that you have, have left behind. And I believe that, that God is sending, amen, maybe two by twos to go back and retrieve those individuals that have been left behind. I believe our purpose is to share that transforming message that Jesus is the healer. Whether you've been restored physically or mentally where you was all messed up, jacked up, amen, and no one wanted to be around you, and all of a sudden you're sane and in your right mind. The man at Gadarens was clothed in his right man, mind, and everybody feared uh, because he was different. And I believe that God is the only one that can turn and transform a life completely around and give peace for the first time that you've had in a very long time. I believe that God is the restorer and the healer of all things that no matter how bad it is, my God is still heal and restore and no matter how deep, come on, how much pain, I'm telling you, our God is enough. In order to help them understand, he demonstrated the kingdom of heaven on earth. Jesus healed and restored. And this is what I heard the Lord say so plainly this morning. He said, I'm bringing healing in the church to, to mass degrees. When people come through the doors, they will be healed. And I believe that it's not some time in a distance. I believe it is today. I believe that you have a physical condition. I believe that, that God wants to heal you uh, today. Come on, we've been, seeing, we've been seeing healings take place, come on, in this house. Not only mentally, come on, I'm not only emotionally, but I'm talking about physical healings being manifested in this house. And I believe that God is still the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. If he healed back then, he heals today. And I believe that God is wanting us to believe greater than we've ever believed. I believe sometimes we have more belief or more faith in some kind of medicine, some kind of vitamin, rather than we do in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong with taking care of your body. But I'm telling you, listen, the devil is out to oppress and destroy, but Jesus went out to seek and save those which are lost, amen, those that are sick, and I believe that he is still the deliverer, and the deliverer is here today to make sure that people leave this place differently. 
I've got to say this. I've got to say this, and it's not, it's not in my notes, and it sounds kind of random, but this is what I heard the Lord say. Do you want to be better? <laughs> I've got to say it again to get it off my spirit. Do you want to be better? Some people want to talk about it. Some people want to just tell, share their story and share how pitiful it is. Amen. Have a pity party. But I'm telling you this, God ain't in all that. But what he is in, he is the one that will save, deliver, and set free and set your feet upon a rock and establish your going and put a new song in your mouth, even praise to our God. He is that healer. He is that great physician. He said, the well doesn't need a physician. And I believe that we all need that physician. There's times in my life I've needed that great physician. I need him all the time. I need him every day. But I believe that things are getting deeper. Jesus comes to us in love. He calls us. He saves us when we trust in him. And he paid the bill. Now I'm closing. I know some of you say there's a miracle already. There's many in this house, you've walked in, you've walked in this place in different backgrounds. I mean, I believe it takes everybody. I do. I, I, I said this in the first service. I, I prayed, and my wife and I prayed a long time ago, 1993, when we started the work. I said, God, send us all the broken. Send us all the broken people. Send us those people that's an addiction, that's been an abuse. Send me those people. And he did. He did. We, we started this work. We had not only a handful, we had countless people. They was broken. They was all jacked up. And I want to tell you this, those people are high maintenance. Give me some music, it'll help me here. <laughs> Amen? They're high maintenance. And here we find ourselves starting a church with broken people. I had Pharisees come in, and I'm going to say, I had Pharisees come in and say, you can't let a novelist teach a class. That's somebody that's been saved less than a year. I said, I bet I can. I said, that's all we got. And then I prayed this. Lord, send me some stable people too. Amen. Let's give it up for the Matthews. See, our, our heart yearns for the broken. Yearns for the broken. And it yearns for the well. Because I feel the Holy Ghost. This is what he wants to do here. Because the well helps the broken. And you got to understand that we're a team. Without Levi, without the Matthews, it's hard for people to get well. See, we need some Matthews to leave everything and say, okay, God, I'm in. Not going to complain about things not going my way. 
Lord, I'm going to be part of the solution. I'm going to reach out and help. I'm going to reach out and heal. We understand what we've asked for, and it does our heart good to see it manifesting. Now, I found out that I don't have to heal. Jesus already did. My job is to give you the gospel. That's the good news. And to simply tell you that the price has already been paid. The healing's been bought and paid for. Watch. Surely he had bore our griefs. There's people in here, you've been battling with grief. You've lost a loved one due to death, or maybe you went through a divorce. Maybe you lost a companion, maybe not to death, but it's worse than that because there was no finality. Maybe it's from divorce. And you're battling with grief, and the Word says that Jesus bore our griefs. And he carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. You don't have to carry your sin any longer. He carried it to the cross. Jesus carried it to the cross. His blood was shed for our sins. And I'm going to tell you this. There's not a sin too bad that he can't cover. Oh, wait a minute. He just corrected me that he didn't already cover. That's what he said. He said, no, 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 I've already done that. There's not a sin that you've committed, that you've committed that his blood hasn't already covered. He just wants you to ask. He just wants you to bring it to him. He was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He said, Brother Tim, I've been talking to the guys. Brother Tim, I, I can't be still. I've got to have a remote in my hand. I've got to have something busy. I've got to have an action movie. I've got to have something because I just can't sit still. There's too much going on in my mind. The chastisement of our peace was on him. And with his stripes, we are healed. 1 Peter 2.24 says, with his, stripes, with his stripes, we were healed. Done, done. All we like sheep have gone astray and turned to everyone his own ways, but the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess I could do a Paul Harvey and say that's the rest of the story. But your story's not done. I'm, I'm going to take you to Psalms 23. Uh, the Lord's taking me back there again. Will you stand with me, please? There's someone in here. There, there's, there's many in here that you haven't gave him all. I'm talking about all. And God wants it all. He wants it all. Watch this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not lack or I shall not fail. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I, 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 just, I just want to say this. And I've done this before. Bryden 
And, and uh, Marcus, will you come here? And, and I've, I've used this illustration, but I'm going to tell you this. This is what this is what happens is when you follow the Lord. This is goodness, and this is mercy. They follow me. No matter where you go, they follow me. You say, I can't, I don't know if I can do life by myself. You're not. Why? Because goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. You say, I'm just so blessed. Absolutely you're blessed. Why? Because goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life. I remember when you gave your heart to Jesus. Amen. You're looking good too. Goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life. Amen. I don't think we've ever done this before. Goodness and mercy will come up in the balcony. Amen. It'll follow you all the days of your life. Goodness and mercy. Why? Because the Lord is your shepherd. Amen. The Lord is your shepherd. There's no lack in him. There's no lack in him. Amen. Goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. Dallas, I love you. So it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter where you go. Look at somebody and say, I'm just so blessed. Because when I lay it down like Matthew did and I follow him, he's my shepherd. Amen? He's my shepherd. Freddie, he's my shepherd. So no matter where I'm going, I'm coming through there. I'm coming through. You better get back. You better get back. I'm coming through there. I've got goodness and mercy following me. Amen? Didn't matter what's going on. If I put my trust in Jesus, if I put my faith in him, I'm not in this alone. I'm not in this alone. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, Jamie. That's what he said. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to walk it out with you. I know life has its hiccups. I know it. I know it, sissy. But I'm telling you this. Listen. God said, I got you. I got you. <laughs> tell him, tell him, tell him. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you all. Tell him, tell him, I give it all. I give you all. He's meeting you right here. He's meeting you right here. Ah. You can't get away from his love. You can't get away from his presence. You think that you can outrun God? You think that you can wear him out? He told me, he said, you can't wear me out. I know you can wear other people out. Maybe maybe you have, that's, that's, that's something else. But I'm gonna tell you, you can't wear God out. And he's not ready to quit on you. He's not quitting on you, amen? Because goodness and mercy will follow you. It doesn't matter how fast you run, amen? It doesn't matter, they're gonna follow you. And they're gonna follow you. No matter how fast you run, they're gonna follow you. They're gonna follow you. I promise you, come on, you can't outrun God. You can't outrun God. You can't outrun his goodness. You can't outrun it. He loves you and he's got a plan for your life. As they sing, and as I catch my breath, God has a plan for you now. There's healing in the house. You say, why do I got to go to these altars? You don't. You don't. Got to meet you right where you're at. But there's something about these altars. 
There's something about saying, God, I can't, but here I am. So run to these altars. Come on right now. Say, God, here, here, take, take it all, take it all, take it all, take it all, take it all. Come on, take it all, take it all. Come run these altars. Run, 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 run. Jesus. Gather around, G and girls. Jen, you're going to get a boost today in the Holy Ghost. Don't mean me, y'all. Jesus. Jesus. Touch my sister. Touch my sister. Touch my sister. That's it. Father, somebody's going to get their joy back in this place. You're going to get your joy back today. You're getting your joy back today. You're getting your joy back today. You too to pray for her. Get away from it. You can't get away from him. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, dear God, Lord, for your word is true. That by your stripes, dear God, we are healed. I speak today to a broken heart. I speak, dear God, that's your love. Dear God, is shed abroad in our hearts. Dear God, it will not sin against you. But I thank you, dear God, that's your love. Dear God, is flowing like a river to these broken hearts. Dear God, to these hearts that have been disappointed. I speak total healing and restoration. Now, Lord, I speak to these physical hearts. Dear God, these heart conditions. And I speak healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Heart murmurs, I command you to go in Jesus' name. I speak that the flow of blood, dear God, is normal through these veins. I speak to every artery, every vein. I speak to every valve of the heart, every chamber, every muscle of the heart to be healed in Jesus' precious name. I speak to kidneys to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Kidneys, I command you to function properly that God has God had created a function. I I speak that all damage be repaired. I speak to the very cells of these bodies to be healed in Jesus' precious name. Cancers, I command you to go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command cancer to leave these bodies. I command sexually transmitted diseases to go in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no place in God's people. I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, they've been healed. Liver conditions, I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you said greater work shall we do in your name because you go to the Father. And I speak total healing and restoration now in the name of Jesus to every liver. 
I speak to gallbladders to be healed in Jesus' name, gallstones to be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to every back, every, every back that is displaced. I speak to every vertebrate, every muscle, every tendon, every disc. In the name of Jesus Christ, every nerve to be healed and to function properly. I speak to curvature in the spine to go and to be straightened up now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to a foot condition in the name of Jesus to be healed. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. I speak to arthritis to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Arthritis, I command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against God's people will prosper. I speak to every joint. I speak to all the inflammation. Dear God, Lord, your word is true. And by your stripes they've been healed. Arthritis, go in Jesus' name. Eczema, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. All skin conditions, I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Now I speak to torment in the minds. I speak to depression to go in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no place, no right on God's people. I command you to go all darkness to flee now in the name of Jesus Christ. I roll back depression in the name of Jesus Christ by the spirit of the living God, by the anointing that's rest upon us in the name of Jesus Christ, by the bloodshed of Jesus. I speak to all fear to go. Someone is getting loose from fear right now. I speak fear to go in the name of Jesus. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. We never see the spirit of bondage again in fear. We speak the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I loose God's people now in the name of Jesus. For whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever I loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In Jesus' precious name.